A few months ago, I released a form to give feedback to me on the 1 to 90 guides and in general. I've gone through, checked the results, and gone through all the feedback. So I want to discuss the results, as well as some further questions. When it comes to viewing habits, it was mostly what I expected. Almost half of all viewers watch most, if not all, guides. More than half of all viewers will re-watch videos or take multiple sessions. Only about 31% will only sometimes or never watch. This seemed like it tracks and makes a lot of sense. Some of the feedback I got emphasized that I should much more make things make sense when contained alone. That will mean a lot of redundancies, but I'll see what I can do to improve on that without being annoying. Next, I got feedback on if any jobs were confusing to people even after my videos. Mostly tracks of what I expected. Black Mage, Ninja, Samurai, Monk are all DPS people struggle with and being there are some of the hardest jobs in the game, and Samurai is also there. I think that's probably an issue of the 60 second cycle and the constant name repeating, because the Kaiten removal literally changed nothing. Generally, people got confused about healing, especially non-white mage. The other three healers are far more technical. I'm not sure how exactly I can improve upon these besides going through them slower. I'll be considering ways to better get across how to use the kit besides the given advice I already do. Tanks and cooldown rotations. I don't get this one really, because outside of raiding and high-end trials, that's not a consistent thing. Every dungeon has a different pace. This dungeon I want to use hollowed ground here, and then here. This other dungeon I can only use it once, so I use it here. At that point, it's not a job guide, but a dungeon guide. Plus how many CDs you need depends on your party too. Maybe I can emphasize that? Double down on reduced damage, bigger damage needs bigger cooldowns? There is no single cooldown rotation I would give beyond the advice I give in the videos themselves. Anyone got any ideas? Because I sure don't. There was also a strange want to not criticize me in this section. It was the point. I may not understand some of the criticisms like the tank stuff without further explaining, but I can't action on anything if I don't even get feedback I don't understand. These much harder jobs I could try and put through more reworks and rescriptings. I did do that for Ninja this time around, but I guess it wasn't enough given that came up so much. So yeah, I'll try and put double duty for the next set of guides on the commonly confusing jobs. Format feedback. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. For every it's too fast, you get at least one it's too slow. I'm not consciously talking any faster than I would naturally. If I was speaking too fast, I am sorry. I may even be doing it this video. But that's not speeding things up, but just talking faster. I will attempt to be more conscious of it going forward though, as it is a common enough criticism. For now though, use the subtitles. I've finally figured out a good way to get those for every video. One person says, too much redundancy. Another says, not enough redundancy. Do less humor. Do more humor. Stuff like that. There is no consensus either way with a lot of the feedback. Like I said earlier though, I'm going to try and add some redundancies without it being overly much. Most people though seem to want them to be longer. Keeping my speech at a good speed will naturally lengthen the videos by probably a good 10%. I do try to go over rotations through the levels and build it up with the explanations. Tank CD ordering or healer CD ordering, which don't have a specific rotation, are harder to fit into the format. AoE rotations, which don't exist for most jobs because it's one button or one combo only. I will try to figure out more on how to do it when relevant, but that's a harder ask than people seem to think. Further on that, there's the feedback of splitting up videos into multiple parts which just feels antithetical? A couple feedback pieces were about, I sent this to a friend and they said it was too long. Is it because of improper presentation on their part? Because the video title is 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. It's intentionally segmented in a way for the previous question of how often do you rewatch? Coming back per expansion is intentionally how I put it together. It isn't one 50 minute video it's a 20, 8, 6, 7, and 7 minute video all put together. So I guess there, those of you who did feedback about friends not liking the length, did you present it as it being split up? 
able to be taken in pieces, videos don't need to be all watched in one sitting. Take your time with them, it's a resource, not a lecture. Is this a result of binge culture? Some people requesting things to be larger? Yeah, I could do that at times, like the suggestion to full-size the openings before going into them. Hot bar size can be a bit harder because there's not much room for the character and enemy to fit while also showing the hot bars. The middle section isn't just for being flashy, but to indeed show the animations and damage are being applied, or how animations look when being cancelled. I really am trying to fit in a ton of stuff. Also, a small note on this one, people suggested do like a musical score kind of showing for openers. Pretty sure that's a mod. That's why you've seen it before. So I can't, without major risk to myself. My UI elements, I keep them plain and simple while still being in theme with the game's design. People seem to have a problem with that? What kind of updates I wanted with this because they didn't actually give any feedback, just I don't like them, they are out of date. Given they were made specifically for this series, that doesn't give me anything to go off of. I even workshopped these with my Discord to get something that looked good, fit in, and wasn't overly busy. So if you got something about that, care to describe your point? I want it to be professional, just tells me you want me to be even lazier and make things uglier. Two minute openers up to reopeners is requested. That's a bit more difficult than you think it is still. Sure, you can mostly just say, do the exact same opener every two minutes, but you need to deal with one minute reopeners too. Hell, I believe one job even only fully loops at six minutes when trying to be optimal. To just say, this is your opener, use everything on CD, is far simpler for getting the basics in my eyes. Many people ask about the opener pictures I use and them wanting to have them, so they take screen caps. One person even specifically requested an image link. They're in the description. Have been since the very first video. Your request has already been granted, and I point you to the description at multiple points. There's only so much you can do with the YouTube medium when adding stuff like addendums. I would need to entirely re-release a video just to... What, say that true thrust got 10 potency higher? Though I guess that's a separate request entirely. I could mention the existence of this link, but at some point I have to cut where the onus is on me to be in charge of things. The viewer needs to have some level of willingness to meet me in the middle. Read the description understand the point of my copy-pasted intro, that being the entire thesis of the series. There's a limit to my power with video guides. Controller layouts. I don't play controller. And I did give you a controller layout in the first two minutes of the video. As for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put your skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you'd like more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. There's lots of other feedbacks given, but not all enough to give a detailed reply to. Small things I can work on or improve here or there. Minor tips. Karaoke openers. This is some of the feedback I am most confused about. There are ways to improve its inclusion, but some people think it's pointless. Honestly, from the feedback I've gotten, I've made the decision to cut out the slow opener go over for only the karaoke opener. For those of you who don't get who this is for, consider that this follows the pace of openers. These are videos meant for people to learn how to play a job. People don't know what the timing of things are supposed to be or how the flow is meant to feel. The karaoke opener not only shows in footage, but audibly tells you when a button should be counted as activated, rather than unrelated skills being used already because the opener is already five skills ahead. So the ideal way to do this seems to be to do my normal breakdown. Here's the opener, now let's explain why we do this order, then afterwards do a karaoke opener where relevant. This will speed up the videos without cutting something that the majority seem to really love. Also, I do chapters for a reason. Skipping ahead is very easy for these guides. 
explanation ends and karaoke begins as a clear separation. This way, it's there for people to have on while they perform it at the same time in-game. That was another feedback. You learn by doing. You can play while a video runs at the same time, you know. As for all the other feedback, I'll be taking it into account where I can. There's only so much I can action on without cutting the karaoke openers entirely, and I really do like their inclusion, as do a lot of people. Like, multiple people say it's too fast? But how? That's the actual speed of the opener. YouTube has a slowdown function, and for actual button pushing, you want to be going at that speed. And it isn't a skill speed issue either, since I usually do minimum skill speed builds. One piece I want to mention though is that I am not doing anything to highlight. I do have the hand moving through the opener. Is there something more you're wanting? Because I am actively highlighting the skills as I go through. Also, if there's any suggestions on how to more differentiate GCD and OGCD skills in karaoke openers, I'm all ears. Halfway through, I took the suggestion of having OGCDs be spoken faster, which seemed to have a significant impact. But if there's more I can do... Highest level of content people do was next. Half of you do not do anything beyond normal difficulty stuff. Only 25% go to extreme, and the other 25% are split between savage and ultimate. So the main focus here is getting people into extreme. Extremes aren't that bad if you can understand normal content blind. If you can't understand normal content blind, it becomes a matter of you needing to brush up on fundamentals rather than anything specific. And a lot of those fundamentals you might only realize in doing that harder content. Just give it a shot, really. It's not that much more than you think on the average, and it'll make you a better player. You don't be a better player to do that content. You do that content to become a better player. Keep my Mechanics Beyond Memorization guide in mind. People aren't memorizing 100 dungeons and 60 raids and 16 24 mans and... They're using general knowledge to react to what they get in future. As for you extreme players? First Fighter 2 of a Savage tier is extreme level. Congrats, I baited you. There is no extreme level. You're all Savage Raiders. Why don't you get into higher content? The main issues seem to be boiled down to a few specific issues. I want to turn this one into a full video beyond the video I already made. Yes, I made a video about getting into Savage. But for now, let me go over the main issues I saw. Time, friends, party finder, finding a static, statics themselves, anxiety. Time. How much time are you spending in-game and enjoying yourself? How much are you spending AFK? How much time are you expecting to need to do Savage? Unless you're one of the players which have less than an hour a day to play, you probably have time to do Savage. You just need to be willing to give that playtime to Savage. You had time to hit level 90 after all, you probably have time to raid. It should be a matter of if you think it's a fun way to spend time. Friends. Do you really have zero friends? I'm sure you can grab one or two of them, or your FC. Join an FC if you're not in one. There's a lot of places to get friends, and you don't need a full party of eight. Get one or two. Grab a guide if you all need, and get started. Or just skip to the next two issues. You don't need a full group, but if you can get it, go for it. Ask them, just don't assume. Party Finder is bad. It's very bad. So if you are bad, don't worry, you're among friends. Well, with air quotes. There's a level of friction that is unavoidable if you're playing with other players. You gotta expect bad players, good players, positive attitudes, and negative attitudes. But it's not all toxic idiots screaming about dots. That's what the current raid tier is doing anyway, so they don't need to. Toxic players happen, but they're not all toxic. Make sure you know your rotations, study the fight ahead of time if you're lacking confidence, and try. Just be ready to worry about getting a party worse than you think you are. Also, uh, you can report toxic people, so... Or if you really can't deal with randoms, we can go for statics. Guess what? Statics are in Party Finder. Watch Party Finder for recruitment posts. 
make your own of, hey, I want to join a static. There's also the recruitment Reddit. Also dozens and dozens of Discord servers with recruitment. There are so many places you can look for a static. And I'm sure if you ask around, you won't even find people who have those links. Then it comes down to being honest about your time requirements, skill, and expectations. If you want to clear a tier within like two months, don't join a static that is super casual about it. Just here for the fun, not the clear smile. Those exist, and they are valid, but they aren't valid for anyone and everyone to join. Which I guess is already putting us into the statics themselves bit. You need to be honest with your wants, and not every recruitment will be honest about theirs, which is why you have trials, not the game content, as in trial period. You get at least one night where you go do content with the group with no guarantee you will be accepted. If you don't gel with the group or they don't gel with you, be it personality, skill, or anything else, you can all say no. Another issue you may have a problem with is scheduling. Statics meet at specific times, which restricts your play in those scheduled times. Some people consider this like working because it's scheduled. But have you really never scheduled time with your friends before? Tomorrow at 8, we're headed to the bar or such. People live their own lives, and having scheduled times is kind of required for people to be able to spend time together. I get it, but I also don't because again, it's scheduled time to be together, not just time to go into work. The other side of the coin is that you might not be scheduling the amount of time you want to have. The group might only be rating 8 hours total across an entire week. This one might be doing 21, 3 hours a day, and that's too much for you. You gotta make a compromise somewhere, or just be lucky enough to find a group with the exact amount of hours you want. But you can't find that if you never look for them. And finally, anxiety and introversion. Hi, I'm an anxious introvert who made speaking for the internet into a job. How did I do it? Uh, it was an accident. Like, it sounds like a joke, but it isn't. I still very much am anxious and introverted. It makes doing anything that I don't do normally a lot harder. So even joining Discord members in their content stuff is this huge undertaking for me mentally. Why do I feel comfy around my static? Because I was forced to be with them for three hours or eight night because I was raiding with them now. Just to get over it is never an answer and invalidates the struggles people have with this stuff. But when it comes to it, I just got over it by forcing myself to experience them. And I repeat the process for every new static. I have confidence in my abilities, my clears and guides are proof of it now, but I'm going to a new group. I'm going to be fearful for a bit. I don't really have any proactive tips you can try. Just try to get over it. If anyone has good advice for this, please do share below and especially on the video I make for this. Videos you all want to see. Go to my channel page and use the search bar. A lot of suggestions I got, I have already done. For example, Palace of the Dead, Blue Mage, Crafting and Gathering, though a bit outdated on these, General Play Guides and Mechanics videos, My UI, which I will update but this video is still applicable. I did ask what you wanted to see, but make sure I haven't already done it. And if what I did do wasn't enough, describe what wasn't enough about it. I'm thinking more of more serious Blue Mage content. I feel like that's someone who saw the leveling skills April Fool's Guide, but not the solo leveling or carnival guides. As for other things, a lot of requests for raid guides, opinion videos, more advanced stuff. Hope you like the 6.2 content. But when it comes to being more in-depth and how to play XYZ job, that isn't my wheelhouse. I don't know every little optimization. I go read up on them before trying them. I stick to the jobs I most enjoy and am most good at. I learn every job to a good level. But I'm not the guy to be teaching the intricacies of individual optimization. One thing that came up a lot is more condensed guides or summary of playstyle. Let me ask you this, 
Did you watch the job description part of the 1 to 90 guides? Because I did add that for that specific job. So I guess my reply to the summary half of it is, I already did that, but was that not satisfactory enough? And what more could I do? All requests for non-Final Fantasy XIV content boils down to... I either would need to WANT to play that game, or... Hi, I stream on Twitch along with having a gaming-based channel. All of it is either linked on the main channel or in the description. Or you can even come to the Discord or follow my Twitter. Lot of options. I've been playing through the Final Fantasy franchise. I played through and beaten 1 through 4 Pixel Remasters, 15 including all DLC and the Comrades content, and Final Fantasy 13 1. Currently, I am on Final Fantasy 5 and 13 2. I also will be doing Splatoon, and I even did some Klonoa. Gotta do the La Mulana DLC at some point. Lots of games. All of the VODs get uploaded to a third channel dedicated for VODs, and I may or may not be starting a gameplay series on the gameplay channel. How many of you have heard of Satisfactory? Not the state of being, but the game. It's a factory game. How's that for a let's play of sorts? Also, the YouTube streams? All VODs are available on the channel. They're not deleted, they're all there. Also, one person specifically mentioned Yakuza 7. Uh, at the time of recording this voiceover, I have just begun the editing for a video on why Yakuza 7 is my least favorite game of all time. So, sucks to be you, I guess. Or you Jericho and did it on purpose. PvP is probably the other major thing people have asked for. I've been giving it time to simmer and just... I've not always been the best PvP player, but I did get high diamond before giving up on randoms all just not doing their roles. We'll see on that one, but I do foresee some kind of updated PvP guides if they're not already out by the release of this. A lot of requests for just things I like. I could do that. Final feedback. This was mostly all praise for me, so I'm going to skip over it, but I will say Thank you. A single rude comment can ruin a day, but the support is so genuinely appreciated. That about covers it. Thank you for any feedback you gave, thank you for the support, and please do continue to support and give feedback. I'll be working to action on what I can and working on other videos. Take care and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies.